In 2018, NASA placed a seismometer on the surface of Mars. It was designed to detect faint vibrations from deep inside the planet. The data revealed a persistent, organized motion beneath the crust, appearing across multiple recordings. What makes this unusual is where that motion is coming from. Mars is not supposed to behave this way. Unlike Earth, it has no active plate tectonics. Its crust is thought to be thick, rigid, and largely frozen in place. Most of its internal heat should have dissipated billions of years ago, leaving behind a planet that is geologically quiet. And for the most part, that's exactly what we see. The surface is ancient. Vast regions haven't been reshaped in hundreds of millions of years. And there is no global system recycling crust or driving constant deformation, which is why repeated motion beneath the surface stands out. The signal doesn't match impacts, atmospheric effects, or surface processes. Its timing and structure point inward, towards stresses building and releasing inside the planet itself. Either Mars is holding on to more internal heat than expected, or something localized is still active beneath the crust. When NASA's InSight lander arrived on the Martian surface, its primary purpose was not to observe surface features or atmospheric activity, but to monitor the planet's internal behavior. Equipped with an ultra-sensitive seismometer, InSight recorded thousands of Mars quakes over the course of several years. Most of these events were weak and widely distributed, consistent with minor crustal stress or distant impacts. However, a distinct group of signals behaved differently. These quakes repeated from the same general location and shared similar timing, depth characteristics, and wave structure. Their signatures did not match those produced by meteor impacts. The seismic waves indicated a source well below the surface. The signals consistently traced back to depths tens of kilometers beneath the surface, concentrated near a region already recognized for its unusual geology. That region is Cerberus Fosse. Seen from orbit, Cerberus Fosse appears as a network of long, sharply defined fractures slicing through the Martian crust. The data now indicates that these fractures are not merely remnants of ancient processes. The repeated Mars quakes suggest that stresses are still accumulating and releasing energy in this region, pointing to subsurface activity that has not completely ceased. What the measurements suggest is not magma rising or a volcano reactivating. There's no evidence of molten rock moving upward or heat increase detected from orbit. Instead, the data points to something quieter. Mars is slowly contracting as it continues to cool. That contraction puts stress on the crust, especially in regions already weakened by old fractures. Cerberus Fossae is one of those regions where the crust is already split and mechanically unstable. When enough stress builds up, the rock shifts slightly along those deep fractures, just enough to send vibrations through the planet, which is what InSight was detecting. In other words, the planet isn't active in the way Earth is, but it isn't completely still either. A planet that can still release stress is a planet that hasn't fully locked into geological dormancy. Its interior may be colder than Earth's, but it's not mechanically frozen. There is still enough internal energy to deform rock, reactivate old fracture zones, and reshape the crust in subtle ways over time. Meaning Cerberus Fossae may not be unique. See, the reason this region stands out is not necessarily because it's the only active area, but because it's the one we happen to place a seismometer near. InSight could only listen from a single location. Everything we know comes from vibrations that happen to pass through that point, which raises a larger question. If similar stresses exist elsewhere beneath the surface, beyond where we can currently measure, then Mars may be more internally dynamic than a single lander can reveal. This is where future missions become critical. InSight proved that Mars can still be studied as a living physical system, but it also revealed a major limitation. One seismometer isn't enough. With only a single listening point, scientists can tell that something is happening, but not how widespread it is or how Mars behaves as a whole. That's why upcoming mission concepts focus less on surface exploration and more on the planet's interior. Multiple landers equipped with seismic instruments would allow scientists to determine whether Cerberus Fosse is an exception or just the first place we noticed. There's also renewed interest in heat flow measurements. InSight attempted this directly, but mechanical issues limited how deep its probe could penetrate. Future landers are expected to retry this with improved designs, aiming to measure how much heat Mars is still losing from its interior. 
a key factor in determining how long internal motion can continue. Orbital missions play a role as well. High-resolution gravity mapping and radar sounding can reveal subtle density changes beneath the crust, helping identify regions where stress is concentrating or where the crust may still be adjusting. Taken together, these missions are trying to answer whether Mars is a planet that has already finished changing or one that's still, slowly, settling into its final state. Most frameworks describe rocky planets in simple terms, active early on, then progressively quieter as internal heat escapes. Mars appears to be following that path, but not as cleanly as predicted. The interior is cooler, yet it continues to respond. The crust is rigid, but it still shifts under long-term stress. The changes taking place inside Mars are subtle and slow, occurring over timescales that are difficult to perceive from the surface or from orbit. The forces shaping the planet have been at work for billions of years, and even now, they continue at a low, almost imperceptible level. InSight recorded only a small portion of this ongoing process, providing a rare glimpse into the planet's internal behavior. The signals reveal that Mars continues to adjust to the gradual loss of internal heat and the stresses built up within its crust. Compared to the Moon, which also experiences internal stress, producing quakes driven by cooling and tidal forces, those events are sparse and tied to predictable external influences. Over time, the Moon's interior has reached a state where motion is limited and highly constrained. Mars, on the other hand, behaves differently. The signals recorded by InSight show repeated activity from the same region tied to internal stress rather than external forcing. That suggests a planet whose interior is still redistributing energy unevenly, guided by structural weaknesses that remain active long after surface processes slowed. Mars is the only rocky planet beyond Earth where this kind of measurement is currently possible. The Moon has been studied seismically, but its internal activity is limited and strongly influenced by external forces. Other planets are either too distant, too hostile, or too poorly instrumented to allow direct observation of internal motion. But it does question whether or not these other planets could also have internal activity inside them. But for now, Mars is the only place where that late-stage process can be observed in detail. And until similar measurements are possible elsewhere, it remains the clearest example of how rocky planets continue to adjust internally even as they approach geological stillness.